Sarah Sanders, Fox News contributor, former White House press secretary. She joins us today from Little Rock. Sarah, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I've been doing uh, the entire debate cycle. Uh, this is the seventh debate for the Democrats in seven months. Is I'm imagining one of those people on a debate stage with Donald Trump. We've seen Donald Trump on a debate stage. He is like something nobody's ever seen before. What do you make of any of those people? Right now, it's Joe Biden who's in the lead, although David Axelrod said that he was low energy last night. What do you think of any of those candidates opposite Donald Trump come this summer? Uh, first, first, I want to say that I'm sorry that you've had to be uh, assigned to sit through all seven <laughs> of those debates because um, uh, it's hard it's to tough. get through one, much less all seven. It's awful. And I can't imagine any of these candidates going up against Donald Trump. This is like uh, the double A minor leagues uh, going up the you know World Series champion. And I mean, it is no comparison. What I saw last night, I feel very good about the president's uh, reelection in November because um, one, it was hard to stay awake. Two, they're fighting over whether or not who has won what election over the last 30 years. Nobody <laughs> cares. The only thing I learned from that is how long these people have been part of the problem right. and not part of the solution. And if they can do math the fact quickly. That they've been doing this for 30 years and are still saying the same things and haven't gotten anything done and Sorry. nothing is better because of their service. I think is a great contrast for this president. And last night was a uh, another big win. For, for Donald Trump. Sarah, you were still doing the job as press secretary when the first debate happened, and I remember they brought up decriminalizing border crossings, the new Green Deal, destroying the oil and gas industry and the health care industry, and those things are still there. But the moderators stopped <laughs> asking them with the new Green Deal because they sound so wacky and they were freaking out Democrats because they know it was not palatable or possible. Why do you think they backed off the questions that made them so controversial? I think because they realized how crazy all of these people sound uh, with every day they were getting rid of something um, and making sure, I mean, the idea of all of these plans, everything in America will now be free, um, yet I, I don't know that how they're going to pay for any of these programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally mm -hmm. everything you hear out of their mouth is it's free this, it's free that, um, and there's no plan to pay for it other than to take money out of everyone's pockets. Um, I mean, Bernie Sanders has now admitted that he's going to raise taxes on the middle class. I mean, it is one thing after another that I think should terrify all Americans, the things that are coming out of Democrats' mouths. They have moved so far to the left that I don't know how people can honestly Right. listen to the policies and the ideas that these individuals are pushing and say that's what we want America to look like. Well, Sarah, Joe Biden is the front runner so far for the Democrats, and he was on stage last night talking about Iran. They were talking about didn't believe that the president was being honest about his reason for killing Soleimani, doesn't believe our intel community. And he also said that the Iran deal was working until President Trump got involved. Listen. I was part of that deal to get the nuclear agreement with Iran bringing together the rest of the world, including some of the folks who aren't friendly to us. And it was working. It was working. It was being held tightly. There was no movement on the part of the Iranian government to get closer to a nuclear weapon. And look what's happened. He went ahead, and it was predictable from the day he pulled out of that agreement. Sarah? I, uh, Joe Biden couldn't be more wrong on this front. The Iran deal was always destined to fail because it was based on appeasement, something we know Iran will never respect and never respond to. In fact, the only thing it did was embolden Iran to uh, further oppress their people, to continue spreading terror across the Middle East, and they never dis dismantled their nuclear mm -hmm. program. The idea that the Iran deal is working is a complete farce and shows why Joe Biden does not need to be back in control of making any foreign policy decisions. Uh, I think last night we saw it play mm -hmm. out uh, from each individual how wrong they've been. The idea that taking out one of the right. world's most dangerous terrorists doesn't make America safer, right. doesn't make the world safer, is just naive. Uh, well, and I think that we saw that from each of them last night. But and you mentioned that Joe Biden's one of the front runners. I thought it was interesting uh, that Warren and Sanders continue to attack the, each other, but they're not going after the front runner. I don't know if anyone's told them, but they're there's no prize for second place uh, when running for president. Right. So they may want to look at the front runner instead of attacking each other. It it's, was interesting to see that play out last night. Well, now, Sarah, you're critical of the debate stage last night 
you're a Republican. Uh, however, <laughs> when you look at some Democrats who are, you know, clear-eyed about the chances of the Democrats, including David Plouffe, who uh, was an advisor to President Obama, and Van Jones as well, some of the analysts last night, and we're going to play a soundbite montage on CNN and MSNBC, they watched the debate. They didn't see anything that can win. Watch this. I will say this as someone who would like to see Donald Trump defeated. Um, I want this race to get tougher. How is this party going to beat Donald Trump, in your view? Well, it's going to be really hard. One of the things that I have a great fear of is I think people see his approval ratings and they assume that he's going to be easy to beat. He's not. Now, I want to say that tonight for me was dispiriting. The Democrats got to do better than what we saw tonight. There was nothing I saw at night that would be able to take Donald Trump out, and I want to see a, a, a Democrat in the White House as soon as possible. There was nothing tonight that, if you're looking at this thing, you say this, any of these people are prepared for what Donald Trump is going to do to us, and to see further division tonight is very dispiriting. And, right. you know, Sarah, this is a stage where Democrats would normally be optimistic about the future, but they don't sound so optimistic. I, I think it was hard to watch last night and be optimistic. I mean, it was hard to watch last night and stay awake, frankly. And I, I think that um, even the most staunch Democrats realize how weak their field is and how strong Donald right. Trump is. And it's not just because their field is weak, but it's because the economy is booming. You're watching the president uh, in the process of two major historic trade deals just this week alone uh, with USMCA and signing the phase one of China trade deal uh, later today. I mean, big things are happening under this president, and it is going to take somebody right. uh, very different than the people that were on stage last night to even mount a real challenge uh, to the great things that are happening under this president. Right. Certainly, uh, it's up there, along with immigration crackdown and the wall being built. The New York Times writes today that the Trump team wants Sanders, thinks that the easiest one to beat, and that you are worried about Bloomberg's money spending $200 million because they all included tax on the president. If you spent a billion dollars, George Washington would have uh, trouble getting reelected. Are you guys worried about both those? Do you want Sanders, number one? And number two, are you worried about Bloomberg's box? Uh, look, I don't think I'm worried about any of the candidates that we saw. Um, Bloomberg's not even part of the discussion. He's not even on the debate stage. Uh, I think it's hard to win the presidency when you're not part of the conversation. Right now, I don't see him being uh, a heavy player in the conversation. I certainly don't think he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this president. Um, I, look, I don't think you can buy the presidency. Americans want somebody that they can believe in, that's a leader, that they can feel comfortable going to bed at night, that somebody is looking out for their safety and their security and their prosperity. And I think they feel comfortable with Donald Trump doing that. I don't think anybody's going to feel comfortable with Bloomberg in that seat. Maybe you're right. Maybe they do want Sanders. Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Ah, yeah, Sarah, congratulations ah. on your new book. You have a new memoir coming out. And I think Thank you're going to you. reveal the cover today. Oh. There it is. Tell us yes, about the book, I'm Speaking about for it. Myself. Uh, it's a it's a story uh, of the kind of historic presidency that we have all been a part of. But I got a front row seat of two and a half years working side by side with the president, uh, sitting in the Situation Room across the table from Kim Jong Un. Uh, I talk about some of that experience as well as the experience of being attacked by the the liberal mob and the White House Correspondents' Dinner, kicked out of restaurants, and, and kind of everything crust. in between. And oh, yeah. the pie crust. Don't worry, uh, Steve. That That'll be in there. The, the pie gate uh, will certainly make an appearance. And um, but I, I think it's a great and uplifting story. And um, it's my story. And I think it's the first really inside account of what's taken place over the last two and a half years inside the Trump White House. And I'm excited to share it with America. Congratulations. Right. And will you have a press conference to unveil it? Thank you. We'll see. Right. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. You guys are all invited. All right. And Jim Acosta. Thank uh, you very much. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Thank you. You got it.